From the Tibetan Plateau, our route takes us around the Himalayas, turning towards northern India to the city of Agra to our next destination, the Taj Mahal, voted as one of the modern seven wonders of the world. We arrive on a balmy, smoggy day. It's said that Agra was founded in 1504 by Sultan Lodi, but historical writings show it dating back 3,000 years ago. From the airport to our hotel, Agra's traffic looks in total chaotic shambles. Animal carts, motorcycles, autos, all scramble for an opening. Yet somehow, everybody knows each other's moves, avoiding what surely would be a complete outright disaster back home. At the hotel, we're greeted by the lovely hostess Sabrina, pointing to the magnificent balcony view of the Taj Mahal. We arrive early to the entrance of this mausoleum masterpiece, built in 1632 by Emperor Shah Jahan, in memory of his third wife, Muntaj Mahal. The emperor was grief-stricken when Muntaj died giving birth to their 14th child. The relationship has come to be viewed as a true love story. Taj is the Persian word for crown, and Mahal is Muntaj's family name, giving reference to her being royalty and in her honor. The Taj Mahal's architecture is of Persian origin and constructed mainly of white marble. Visitors worldwide come to share and experience this spectacular complex in their own way. But most want a photo of themselves with the Taj Mahal as a background. Can't blame them, it's one heck of a setting. With over two million annual visitors, booties are required to protect and lessen damage to the marble flooring. The exterior decorative elements are carvings, paint, calligraphy, and motifs, keeping in line with Islamic prohibition using human characteristics or shapes. The central focus of the mausoleum is, of course, the two cenotaphs of Shah Jahan and Muntaz Mahal. Their actual tombs are in the underground crypt below. Leaving this wonder of the world, we visit another mausoleum, sometimes called the Baby Taj Mahal. And again, we were required to wear protective booties. It was commissioned about 10 years before the Taj Mahal, around 1622, by Nur Shahan, for her father, Mirza Jahayas Beg, and grandfather to Muntaj Mahal. Although the area of the complex is of moderate size, the grounds are meticulously kept well-groomed by local elderly employees. We also found a site to have an interesting charm with this array of visitors offering a glimpse of India's varied society. Our next stop is a visit to a village inhabited by people known as the Untouchables. India's Hindu society is fragmented into basically a five cats system with the lowest known as Pankamas or Untouchables. Since individuals cannot change their caste affiliation, the entire family belongs to that certain caste from generation to generation. Indians are always conscious of social order and their status relative to other people, be they family, friends, or strangers. The sari is the national dress of Indian women. It can be worn in different ways and it denotes the status, age, occupation, region, and religion of a woman. It is more than 5,000 years old. As we continued strolling through the narrow walkways, we discovered a community with hard working people. Their warmth and friendliness made us all feel welcome. <laughs> One. 
We end our wonderful visit to Agra with traditional Indian entertainment, a warm evening, and a taste of local customs. Our in-flight monitor shows we've departed India and now heading to our next destination, Africa. <laughs> Arriving at Kilimanjaro Airport, we're greeted by guides who transfer us to smaller aircrafts that fly to Lake Manyara Airport, closest airstrip to our lodge on the rim of the Gorongoro Crater. At the lodge, no one is allowed to walk the grounds without a Maasai warrior due to elephants and water buffaloes frequently passing through. Checking in and checking out of the crater is mandatory. All visitors must be out by nightfall. This includes local Maasai allowed to graze the herds during the day. <laughs> so this, uh, yeah, have name Gorongoro Kenso. Yes. Our first wildlife encounter was with the olive baboon, having a dog-like face and known to be very intelligent and crafty. Each baboon has a social ranking somewhere in the group, depending on its dominance. Females are about half the size of males, and males can weigh up to 110 pounds. They spend hours in mutual grooming, a key way of forming bonds, as well as keeping clean and free of parasites. Sometimes we can see uh, zebras, gno, and cow also. Together. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Next, we ran across warthogs. By tolerating a higher than normal body temperature, the warthog is able to live without water for several months. Though they appear ferocious, they are basically grazers. Lions and leopards are their chief enemies. When threatened, can run up to 30 miles per hour. And they are huge, weighing from 120 to 250 pounds. Along the road, a giraffe and a young cross in front of us, conveying a feeling. Yup, this is the real Africa. A water buffalo skull shows how clean vultures polish off a carcass. African vultures are diminishing at an alarming rate. In 2012, they were reassessed from near threatened to endangered. Are they, are they at a kill there? I think there's a... Uh, he's heading for the... Oh, he's oh. running, yeah. You think he's gonna attack? Yeah, just want to attack the baby. The baby, yeah. yeah. Oh, look at them running. The baby. Yeah, they're protecting. So Is there a after. baby in there? No, they're running from him. Looking for a kill, but can't find the right. He wants a baby. Yeah, can't have the big ones. Wildebeest were first discovered about 1700 by Dutch settlers. Due to the resemblance to wild cattle, they called them wild ox or wildebeest. Some East African wildebeest have a long distance migration, time to coincide with annual rainfall and grass growth. <laughs> Zebras evolved within the last four million years. The stripes help to confuse predators by degrading the predator's ability to estimate its speed and direction accurately. Also, by standing or moving close together, appear as one large mass of flickering stripes, 
making it more difficult for the lion to pick out a target. Is that a warning sound that he was making? Yeah, yeah. it's a warning. Sometimes also when they see lion, they can make noise. Okay. Gazelles are small antelopes, long appreciated for their elegance. Unlike other animals, are not affected by the Earth's gravitational pull. Instead, they feel the effects of the moon's gravity, which is why they can run and prance with such grace and are able to run at speeds as high as 60 miles per hour. The hippopotamus is semi-aquatic, meaning it spends much of its time in the water, leaving only to feed. DNA and fossil records in Africa shows they evolved about 16 million years ago and their closest living relatives are whales, dolphins, and porpoises. Hippos are very aggressive towards humans, whom they commonly attack whether in boats or on land, with no apparent provocation. They are widely considered to be one of the most dangerous large animals in Africa. The African water buffalo is not related to other water buffaloes and its ancestry remains unclear. Its unpredictable nature makes it highly dangerous to humans and has never been domesticated like other water buffaloes throughout the world. Known within Africa as Widowmaker, it kills over 200 people every year. Even though the ostrich is the largest living species of bird, it is flightless. With acute eyesight and hearing, they can sense predators from far away. Reaching speeds in excess of 40 miles per hour, ostriches often outrun most predators. One exception, the cheetah. As of 2010, only 80 eastern black rhinos are in Tanzania and is listed as critically endangered due to poaching for its horn. Being extremely aggressive, rhinos charge readily at any perceived threat. Having poor eyesight, they rely on their excellent hearing and smell. With their imposing size, thick skin and deadly horns, they have no natural predators. Large male specimens have been reported to weigh over 6,000 pounds and run at speeds over 30 miles per hour. So make sure you keep your distance. 10,000 years ago, the lion was the most widespread large land mammal after humans. They were found in Africa, Europe, India, and the Americas from Alaska to South America. Today, it is the second largest living cat after the tiger. The African lion evolved about one million years ago, with its closest relatives being the tiger, the jaguar, and the leopard. Lions are the only members of the cat family where males and females look distinctly different and spend over 20 hours per day resting, two hours walking, and 50 minutes eating. Imagine Tom. Besides humans, the African crocodile is the only predator that singly can threaten a lion. Crocodiles have been known to kill lions entering waterways, while the reverse is true for crocodiles venturing onto land. Meanwhile, zebras keep a constant watch of lions' movements, for good reason. Our wildlife excursion ends at a Maasai community where Maasais welcome visits to the village to experience their culture, traditions, and lifestyle. Here warriors perform the Adumu, or jumping dance they're well known for. A circle is formed and one or two will enter to begin jumping. Group members will raise the pitch of their voices based on the height of the jump. The Tanzanian government has encouraged the Maasai to abandon their semi-nomadic lifestyle. However, international development organizations claim that the lifestyle of the Maasai should be embraced as a response to climate change because of their ability to farm in deserts and scrublands. They are also internationally known for their beautiful intricate jewelry. Arriving at dusk with lit torches, 
Local Maasai youngsters from a nearby village treat us to experience some of their rich and colorful customs. Before boarding our domestic flight back to our waiting jet in Kilimanjaro, I want to thank Nurdin, our wildlife guide, for his hospitality, humor, and above all, extreme knowledge of Africa's wildlife. Arriving at Kilimanjaro and transferring to our jet, we fly past Africa's highest mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro. On our way to our next destination, the ruins of Petra, voted into the new Seven Wonders of the World in 2007.